Hello YouTube friends. This is a quick tutorial on how to identify a native persimmon tree in the fall. First of all, you'd want to go to an area that is known for having native persimmon trees. You walk along until you bump, oh, right in the face with one of these guys. That is a native persimmon. They're not like the Japanese or hybridized persimmons that you see in the store. You can eat the whole thing. You don't even have to wash it. It's got uh, natural, you know, yeast and bacteria there on the outside. Nothing that can harm you. Never heard anybody getting sick from eating a... You know, as long as this place hasn't been sprayed. As long as there hasn't been chemical spraying that's going on. And inside, it has these really large seeds. There's one in the flesh right there. We'll have a look at the seeds later, but that is a native persimmon. This is a small native persimmon tree. And that's how you ID it. How easy is that? I'll bring you back here in just a second. So you need to choose one that is nice and shriveled. There are two right there. Let's see if I can uh, reach. Just twist it lightly, and that pulls it off from the twig. That's what it looks like. Shriveled up, kind of a purplish or light pinkish uh, color to it on the outside where it hasn't been rubbed. Anywhere where you contact that and rub off that that yeast and, and that outside coating, it'll begin to look more, more orange. Has this little part right there. I usually just pick that off because you don't want to eat that. But otherwise, the whole thing is edible. If you really want to get picky, you can peel the skin off, but I don't think it's necessary. So just plop that one the way it is right there in your mouth. So there are all the persimmons from that one that I showed you. That's what's left. So what if you're not seeing any when you look up? What if you're not? Well, the other thing you can do is to look down. You'll see that. Look a little bit further. You'll see that. You see one? This one's not going to be ready. That one's still going to be hard. It'll it'll have a very astringent uh, taste to it. It'll be hard to eat. One trick, if you're ever in a place where you have the opportunity to harvest uh, native wild persimmons and they're not quite ready, they're still firm like this, um, that means they're still going to be astringent, put them in the freezer for like two or three days and then move them from the freezer to the refrigerator for about a day and a half to two days long enough for them to thaw out some and then put them back in the freezer and then once you take them out the, they will have lost most of that astringency maybe all of it it just depends sometimes on the exact fruit and the tree and everything but usually that right there will uh, break down and cause them to lose most or all of the astringency and they'll be uh, quite edible I would wash them very well before I put them in the freezer the first time. That way you wouldn't have to worry about the skin. Um, but I, uh, if, you remove, if you remove that part right there, just do it as much as you can without opening up the fruit. It, it will be better if the fruit stays closed up during this whole process. Uh, the other option would be just to break off the stem right there and to put it in like this, but wash it and then put it in. Okay? Let's say you do find the fruit on the ground. Looks pretty pretty bad. This one does right here. In a survival situation, it's 100% edible as is. In any other situation, you'd probably pass it up. I'll show you why I'm going to pass this one up. Um, you would want to clean it off as much as you can because there is, uh, well, right there, there's some broken up cattle poop and uh, a lot of times in areas where you find these persimmons you will find 
scat or dung piles of either wild hog or coyotes. They both love them. But here is why I am not going to even think about picking up any, eating any off the ground. Look at that. Yeah, I think I'm good. I think I just need to bring the uh, ladder out here. I think I'm good. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Y'all take care. Bye-bye now. What? Are you guys still here? All right, well, for those that are interested, I'll show you the bark. We'll just look at it up close. This is the bark of the persimmon tree, just in case this will also help you in IDing it. Uh, it is already fall, so I don't have any leaves to show you. I am in northeast Texas, so I'm not sure how much the white pattern is uh, like a lichen or something, because you do have this, you know, I don't know if it is a lichen or, or whatnot, but that bark fungus or, but you do have that on there. It's not moss, but you do have that growing on there. And then you have these white patterns. And I don't know if that's the tree itself that makes those or if that's some interaction. But these are just young trees. And they all have that, that white pattern mixed in. You know, you also have some of this uh, yellow lichen. Where is it? Right there, right there. There they are. So just in case that... Uh, Seeing the bark up close kind of provides some help in IDing the tree. Good luck out there. Stay safe. Y'all have a good one.